Hello everyone. So today we are actually going to have some fun with long exposures. There's no self-portrait in this video. It's just landscapes. As you can see behind me, we have this beautiful mountain scene, which I'll show you in a minute. And I'm really, really excited to share two things with you guys. First thing is Oli is back. I will show him to you in a minute. I have him with me out here photographing. It is so, so good to have him back. The second thing is the reason why we're doing a long exposure video is because this video is sponsored by the amazing company Reflex and they're a pretty cool company. They reached out to me and it was kind of a no brainer for me since I specialize in long exposure and I've been doing long exposure for over at least 10, 11 years now. So to say that I definitely know some stuff about long exposure is an understatement, but I really, 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 really wanted to try this out because I thought it would be a lot of fun and uh, take you guys along it. So I'm going to do kind of like a comparison, but it's not really a comparison. Uh, the app that I'll be using by these guys is actually for the iPhone or phones, smartphones in general. And it's really, really cool because with two of the apps, you, one of them, it's called Reheld, and you can do up to a 30 second long exposure with just hand holding it. So you don't need a tripod, you don't need filters, you really don't need anything. You can just stand there and hold it and take a long exposure. That is very cool. And then the other one, you would definitely need to use a tripod, but um, it gives you a lot more time. So you can do, I can't quite remember how long of an exposure you can do, but minutes, I think actually it goes into bulb mode and it also produces raw files. So the one where you handhold does not produce raw files, just JPEGs, but the other one does. So we're gonna take three shots of the same scene, one with my DSLR, one with the handhold, the reheld, so I'll be holding that one for the long exposure, and then I'll use re-expose, which is the more like professional app, I guess we could call it. So really excited to do this. So honestly, let's just get started and I'll show you guys what I'm photographing. I also came to this specific spot because the mountains are really, really close to like where I'm shooting. So I wanted to test out the capabilities of like how wide it can shoot because here in the Rockies, you need wide. So yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. Excuse me, Ollie. Ollie, hi, honey. Hi, we can see you. Hello, how are you? So good to have you back. Are you happy to be back out here? Yeah, a little bit too much of walking for you today, wasn't it? Oh, you're so sweet. So first up, we're going to do my camera with a 10 stop. And I typically photograph all of my scenes the same, like judging by what time of the day it is. But there is my magnetic 10 stop on there. So I'm going to be photographing it at F16, ISO 100, and I should probably be able to get around a 20 to 30 second exposure. Again, depending on like how much light is on the foreground, water, etc., and in the clouds, because even though it's really sunny, it, I mean, even though it's the middle of the day, uh, the sun keeps going in and out of the clouds. So the light does kind of change a little bit, which will affect the exposure time. Okay, here we go. First one on the camera. Again, we're gonna go for about, we're gonna go for about 20 seconds on this one because I think that that will be plenty enough time. So that is actually a 30 second long exposure and that was pretty much perfect. If I went any longer then a lot of the um, clouds would start blowing out. So we have one and I'll show you them. I'm gonna go back home and edit these so then we'll compare them all. So I won't show you the final result yet because now I'm gonna to switch to the phone and use the Reexpose app. So now I have the phone set up on my camera. I am using the Peak Design little phone attachment and it actually really sucks just so you know, but it is what I have so I'm gonna use it anyways. But I'll show you what the app looks like and I was kind of playing around with it a little bit before to try and make sure that I'm getting like an even exposure. So there's definitely some trial and error with it, but it's really, really cool because there's two settings. So this one is called motion blur. That's the one I'm gonna use for like smoothing out the sky, smoothing out the water. And then this one right here is actually for um, like uh, light trails, but we're not gonna be doing any of that. So we're gonna stick with the motion blur one. 
I obviously am shooting in the middle of the day, so I want my ISO to be as low as possible. You can see if we go up too much, then we're gonna blow out some of the highlights. So we want a really, really low ISO. And then we're gonna adjust the shutter speed here until it looks like I have a bit of an even exposure. And I think that that looks pretty good right there. And then it, there is a manual focus um, function, like you can change the focus right here by moving this, but I simply just click on the screen and let it focus where it's gonna focus. And then you can also adjust your white balance, but I usually do that after in post, so we're just gonna leave that there. Another cool thing about this is that there is a timer, so three second, 10 second, 20 seconds, but we're gonna do three second timer, and then that will ensure that there will be no like shake when you press the shutter button and take the photo. So we're all set up, and I'm also actually shooting this at ultra wide, so there's the ultra wide setting. There is telephoto, we don't want that wide, but for the big mountains here, we need ultra wide. So let's see what happens. I'm gonna do a 30 second exposure with this. Okay, so it came out a little bit underexposed, but that's actually okay because when I edit it, I really want to um, see the limits on pushing the shadows with this. So this is the one that I'm gonna use. But what I can do if I don't want like to deal with the shadows or who knows what will happen with them, I can simply just adjust my shutter speed or again, adjust the amount of seconds that I'm doing the exposure for. So I could go for a little bit less of time. So I'm gonna try this again at 20 seconds. So now I'm going to do the handhold, the reheld app. And again, I'll show you what it looks like on the back of the screen. It's really, really cool because you can actually watch the exposure build as it is happening. That is so, so cool. And this one doesn't have as many settings. And again, it only will produce JPEGs, but you don't need a tripod. Again, you don't need filters. You don't need anything. And you can take a long exposure of up to 30 seconds with this one. So I'm stand, trying to make it so it's the exact same composition. I'm standing in the same spot that I was with the other one and I'll try to make it obviously look exactly the same but let's see how it works so as you can see we have the ultra wide lens this well this is the telephoto lens wide and again for this scene I need the ultra ultra wide lens so that's what we're going to go with and we're going to try and do a 30 second exposure and you have to stay really really still with this so Going to have to hold my breath while I do this, but let's hope for no movement in anything other than the water and the sky. It is really hard to stay still, by the way. Oh my gosh, it's shaking. It's really cool because you can see it in the screen as it builds. I really, really like that. And I'm trying so hard not to move. Almost done, almost done. Honestly, not bad. Like it came out pretty good. It's evenly exposed and I could just simply stand there and do it handheld. But I am gonna try and edit this one as well because again, it only produces JPEGs, but I do think that there's a little bit of um, boosting that we could do with this. So yeah, I'm gonna actually head back home now and then we will throw these images into Lightroom and Photoshop and we'll do a really nice comparison of all three of them. And again, it's not to see which one is better. It's just how cool is this? Like these new things that you can do now. I see, I'll explain a little bit later in the video, but how I can see this benefiting anybody when they're out shooting. All right, now it is time to look at these three images and I've already kind of done some editing on them and they look pretty good. Like I'm pretty impressed. Again, I'm not gonna pick a favorite or anything like that because they're all kind of completely different, but a little bit later on, not too much longer because I'm not going to show you that much more stuff. I will explain like where I can see photographers benefiting from this. But first, I just want to take a quick minute to say the only way that this channel grows is really because of you guys. You know, we're kind of all like this little yellow community. So if you do really like what you see and you're finding value from what I'm sharing, and if this is your first time here, I do a lot of different uh, videos. So 
hopefully you can go back and watch some other ones. But again, if you're watching this and you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing because it only helps all of us. It helps the channel get bigger and there will be more value added to the channel as it gets bigger. So definitely subscribe if you are enjoying what you're seeing. All right, so the first one that we are going to look at is was, was taken with my DSLR and that is this one here. So the biggest difference that I see between the three of them is obviously the focal length, like this is taken with a 16 to 35, but it was not that ultra wide lens, so it doesn't have as much of the clouds in it, but I still obviously really, really like it. And I'm gonna photograph this scene again because I love it here. But that's what it looks like on the DSLR. Of course, it's, it's great quality, had a long exposure. I do see a little bit right here of the clouds uh, blowing out, but that's okay, it, it doesn't really bother me. However, it did happen, which is interesting that it was the DSLR that happened on. The next one, and this one's actually my favorite, this was taken with re-expose. And this is the one where I said I wanted it to be a little bit underexposed so I could bring up the shadows, and it did a beautiful job at bringing up the shadows. I absolutely love the clouds. It looks really, really awesome. I did have a little bit of blowing out on this side, but there was a lot of dynamic range that was going on in this scene while I was photographing it, so for I could have done a little bit of a lower um, exposure time, but it, anyways, that doesn't really bother me as well. But I love the way that the clouds turned out in this. And the water already was like glass when I was there, so it really just simply smoothed it out even more. Next one was taken with reheld, and this is the one where you have to hold it, and again, it only produces JPEGs. But I did a little bit of tweaking with it, and it's a pretty good file, so there is a lot of potential to be able to edit it. And to be quite honest, like I don't know of the two which one I would prefer. I do believe I like reheld a little bit better not for that you can only do 30 second um, exposures, but I just love how easy it is to use. So for myself, if I'm using them, uh, using these apps, obviously I'm gonna be taking images with my DSLR. I just always will. But I would love, I love the option of being able to play around with reheld and just, you know, go walk around the scene and take long exposures. And what I was saying before, where I see the value of this is that if you're a professional photographer or amateur, whatever, doesn't really matter, and you use a camera, again, if you're doing long exposures or you're photographing other things, you now have this really cool app where whatever you're doing with your camera, you can simply just go around and play with this and take multiple images and see what's possible because then you could take the same image on your camera later. But this is super, super cool. I love this. And I love that you can use these two apps and um, it really will like enhance your social media experience as well. Like if you're sharing on Instagram, Facebook, wherever else you're on, Vero, then it's just cool to be able to have these really quick options to capture some long exposures. And they honestly look great. There really is no difference to me, especially if you're posting on social media of the difference of the quality. So a big thank you again to Reflex for sponsoring this video. It was really fun to just work with you guys. And I really feel that this company is good. Like they're so professional with what they do. And I just think it's super cool that we now have these options with the phone. I definitely am gonna uh, carry on using them or using these two apps, especially Reheld. That one is actually my favorite. So yeah, thank you so, so much again for watching this video. And please subscribe if you enjoyed it. And I will talk to you guys next week. Bye.